Same-sex marriage, the controversial subject that won't go away. A subject that really requires serious public debate and candid discussion based on valid research. But all too often, such debate is shut down by slamming any alternative view as homophobic. Now, homophobia, as any phobia, means irrational fear. But it would seem that the irrationality in this debate is clearly on the side of homophobia phobia. But no matter how much homophobia phobia creates opposition to the debate, same-sex marriage remains too important an issue to decide upon without wide-ranging, well-informed debate about the consequences of passing it into law. To fully understand this issue, we need to ask two questions. Firstly, will it be good for society? And secondly, will it indeed be good for homosexuals and, tra and transgender sufferers? Today, I want to look at same-sex marriage from a different perspective. The issue here is not whether a right is being infringed, but whether a new and fundamental right should be created, bringing about radical change in social arrangements and the associated risk of unintended consequences. Let me ask you, by giving the homosexual lobby what they want concerning same-sex marriage, do you think it will actually help homosexuals and, the, and transgender sufferers? Do you think that will help the disproportionate and tragic suicide rate amongst homosexuals, lesbians, bisexuals and those suffering from transgender confusion? To answer these questions, Mr. Walt Heyer, author and gender confusion expert, joins me. Walt's personal transgender journey, his subsequent research, and his work with gender and sexuality confused individuals have given him some of the most acute insights into this issue available to us today. Great to have you with me, Walt. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here, thank you. Uh, Walt, could you just briefly describe to us your transgender journey? Yes, I can. You know, as a young child at the age of five years old, I was absolutely convinced that I was a female trapped in a boy's body. And I struggled with this gender identity issue month after month, day after day, year after year. I struggled with it until the time I was in my early 40s when I was absolutely convinced that I needed to undergo the transition gender surgery. And so I went through the surgical procedure. I, had, I came up uh, with a new birth record. I, I changed my name to Laura Jensen and lived eight years as Laura Jensen. But in that process, I discovered that you don't have to be trapped in that confusion, in that gender. Uh, I found out that there is a way out, and the way out is realizing that the surgery does not change you from a male to a female. And so in that effort today, I'm reaching out to other people to let them know that there is a way out, that you don't have to be trapped, and you can be restored to your birth gender as I have, and as many of the other people that I'm working with today have been also. Yeah, you know, my gender confusion started when I was being babysat by my grandmother, and my grandmother, either I gave her some signals or she felt the need to dress me up in a purple chiffon dress. I was only five years old at the time. And that perpetuated every time that I was over there being babysat, I was cross-dressed by my grandmother in, in this beautiful purple chiffon evening dress. And that started this process in my mind that maybe I should be a girl. And, and, and it's so hard to dismiss that when you have such affirmation from your grandmother, people you trust, and that develops over a period of time. But what happened as a result of that was that when my father found out that I was dressing as a girl, he, he began to physically abuse me in, a, in an effort to try to make me manly, to make me strong. And that physical abuse only did more damage and more destruction. And then beyond that, his brother, my uncle, decided that you know, he should sexually molest me to, uh, as part of this process. So I've got a grandmother who's dressing me in a purple chiffon dress, a father who's abusing me physically, and an uncle who now is sexually molesting me. So all of those things together, along with the gender confusion, made it almost impossible for me to have a clear understanding of what I was as a young boy growing up. 
And I realize today that whether you're transgender or whether you're homosexual, something happened, something unfortunate happened that's driving these desires and these issues that are destroying our lives. And I have found so many people who are just like me who are molested or abused and something drastic happened in their life that started this lifelong process into homosexuality and transgender. Yeah, and struggling with these tremendous identity issues of my gender, I was still fighting them like so many people do. You know, you don't want to come out and say that you're a transgender or that you have these issues. So I ended up getting married. And in, during the marriage, I fostered two wonderful children. But I was struggling the entire time. And to cope with that struggling, I started using alcohol and drugs and other things that kind of got in this mix. So here I am now struggling from a childhood that was damaged by what happened early on. And now I'm in a marriage where I'm actually being successful in business, but I was unsuccessful at being able to tamp down these tremendous daily desires of wanting to change my gender. And so once I decided that I was going to change my gender and went through that process, the pain that came years after having done that is just insurmountable. I weeped every day for the children that I had left behind. I realized how selfish and self-centered I'd been and what I had done to my wife and, and the whole structure of family. It's why it's so important to focus on why families are important because transgenders, when they do this to their wives and their children, destroy the whole foundation of family. And I realized how painful it is to our children. It isn't just a singular issue about one transgender having these issues. It destroys an entire family and affects a generation of people. And my children now struggle with the things that I've done in my life. And that's why today as a restored person, I want to talk out to try to save other children and other families and other wives from these tragic events that happen as a result of it because it is so painful. And during that time, I became suicidal and my psychologist thought for sure that I was going to commit suicide. In fact, he went home and told his wife, I think Walt is going to commit suicide tonight. I didn't, thank God. But I'm here today to speak out and try to reach out to help others to try to prevent the tragedy of gender change surgery. Eight years after the gender change surgery I thought that was really going to fix everything in my life, I found was actually destroying everything in my life. My life had been completely turned upside down, but I thought I was stuck. So many people feel that they can't get out of it. But when I realized I could change, I had the power to change. I didn't need to stay stuck. And so when I realized that, I began to walk back to my birth gender and realizing that walking back to my birth gender is the way out. It's, it's the saving grace to be able to do that. And anybody can change if they have a desire to change. And that is the key. It's about desire. And once I had that desire and moved in the desire to change back to my birth gender, then my life began to be restored. And as my life was restored, I found the things that I had actually been looking for prior to having the gender surgery. So the gender surgery doesn't fix anything. In fact, it does more destruction than it does helping. And today there are so many people who are stuck in believing that they're in this, trapped in a body that is not the one they want to be in and they opt for gender surgery. And that becomes a much bigger problem than just having gender identity issues. So there is a way out. And I'm reaching out to those people and more and more people have come to me and talked to me about being able to restore their birth genders and they're much happier today because they're not caught up in that old story about the need to change their genders. And I realized that transgenders, so many of them are homosexual and they struggle just like anybody else does with their issues and transgenders and homosexuals, they themselves are suffering and they themselves have very high rates of suicide, drug addiction and high mortality rates. And if if changing gender is such an, an important thing to do, why is it destroying so many lives? We need to ask these important questions. 
and why today are we elevating transgenders to a level of freedom that is actually causing them such great harm in our society today. I want to help transgenders. I want to reach out to them and provide a way for them to get the treatment they need. And surgery is not the treatment they need. They're suffering and the suffering can end and they do have a way out. And you know, when I was approved for the gender reassignment surgery, I was approved by Dr. Paul Walker, who at the time had written the Harry Benjamin International Standards of Care. This guy was the number one guy on approving gender change surgery. He knew what was required and what the issues were around that. And he felt that he was really helping me. I had gone in and told him my life story about how I had struggled with these gender issues. And so he wrote the letter that approved me for surgery. But you know, that surgery later on, when I went back and confronted him and said, you know, Dr. Walker, this really didn't help me. And he confessed to me that he was a homosexual, that he was an alcoholic and a drug addict at the time he had approved me for surgery, at the same time that he had written the International Standards of Care. And he actually was dying from AIDS at that time and he apologized to me and he in fact even wrote a letter so I'd have it even after his death. He said, I'm sorry for this mistake which, which has caused you such great pain. And so, you know, today his parallel of trying to help and like he was helping me is much like what they're trying to do with the laws. They're trying to, society is pushing, media is pushing, the advocates are pushing for these laws to expand it so more and more people can have the surgery. But the fact of the matter is, the surgery doesn't fix anything. In fact, the surgery is what's causing the harm. And if you can take away from this how Dr. Paul Walker thought he was helping, how the lawmakers think they're helping, how the advocates think they're helping, the fact of the matter is we're giving way too much freedom, way too much freedom for people to destroy their lives. And we, we really need to stop and take a pause and have compassion and understanding that that is really not helping them and we need to step back from this and this is the way to save many lives. And the tragedy of this is what's going to happen with same-sex marriages when we allow transgenders to have new birth records and same-sex marriages comes about through this thing and as I said before it's going to destroy the very foundation of marriage because it dilutes and diminishes the importance of marriage and not only that, we're going to have more and more people entering this world of transgender and homosexual and same-sex marriage that are going to be more suicides, more high-risk behaviors. And that in itself is going to begin to destroy families. And whether you went through the process completely and got married or not is not the issue. These issues destroy the very foundation of marriage because it destroys gender. And the actual foundation of marriage is one man and one woman, not a transsexual or a homosexual. Transgenders that suffer from gender confusion, you know, and there is a sexual component in there that homosexuals suffer the same way. They're in, they are interlinked transgenders and, and the homosexual behavior. Sexuality is so, is so misunderstood today and it's all mixed in with the homosexual and transgender community. And I worry that we are giving such freedoms to these communities by the advocates pushing and pushing and pushing for more protection laws that we're actually causing more and more people to suffer from suicide, from alcoholism, from drug addiction, and from high risk behaviors that are just driving the mortality rates for homosexuals and transgenders skyrocketing and you know there's really no need to do that they do need help but it isn't freedom it's understanding and compassion and it's good treatments and it's not surgery Walt as you know there's tremendous pressure here in Australia to legalize same-sex marriage homosexual marriage. Right. Now, whenever there is a radical change in social arrangements, there's always the peril of uh, unforeseen and unexpected consequences. What sort of unexpected uh, and unintended consequences do you foresee uh, here in Australia 
if homosexual marriage is legalized. It's going to diminish and it's going to dilute the importance of marriage. And it's so important for children to be raised by their birth mother and their birth father. It's going to destroy that foundation that is so important uh, to the structure of family and for the health of the children. They need to be raised by their own birth mother and their own birth father. And this is not going to happen with same-sex marriage. And that's so significant. That very foundation of marriage will completely collapse with same-sex marriage because it cannot, they cannot produce uh, you know, kids themselves. They can't be producing children. And so we're going to end up with a tragic consequence to the structure of family. And it's going to be something like, I can't even explain it. No, that's fine, Walt. But what I, I really want to know as well is the, the unintended consequence for our youth. It's, we know that children need a mum and dad. But do you think there's actually going to be a rise in confusion, uh, a rise in, in uh, suicide amongst youth who are not sure about their gender or about their sexuality? Uh, are we actually perpetrating the problem by condoning it legally? Well, certainly when we can see today that uh, transgenders and homosexuals have high rates of suicide, high risk of bad behaviors, we're going to be perpetuating the problem even more, especially with same-sex marriage because they're going to be adopting children. Those children are going to become confused and we're going to start a generation of even more confused people. This is just not healthy for our society, it's not healthy for our children, and it's not healthy for marriage. Homosexual and transgender behavior deviates from the norm. Now, perhaps one and a half percent to two percent of Australian society struggles in this area. Now, whenever we have deviant behavior, there's different things that we can do, do with it. We can either prohibit it like we did up until 20 years ago, when sodomy was prohibited in Australia and most Western cultures. The second thing we can do is we can tolerate it, creating a laissez-faire type society where we say, whatever you do in the privacy of your bedroom is fine. And that's where we are at the moment. The third thing we can do is we can give it special privileges and special dignity, which is what we're facing here. And when we do that, we in actual fact are promoting and encouraging deviant behaviour. Now, Walt experienced this, this special dignity and special uh, privilege when he was in America and has some very strong feelings about it. Uh, well, what happened to you in what you experienced? In, in Did that actually help you by the dignity and special privileges you were given? Actually, those special privileges and, quote, special dignities actually did more to damage my life and destroy my life and destroy those lives around me than it did to help me. So those things do not help people. Expanding their privileges, expanding the laws and things are more destructive. Please understand this is not an attack on bruised and confused individuals who need the love of God to set them free. It is rather a rational and informed stand against the deluge of disinformation being pushed by a lot of Australia's media. United we stand. Together we can stop this radical social change. Stand with us. Stand for marriage. Thank you.